хочу вам представити виступ Ебі Елдер і трошки зробити так, такий, знаєте, місточок. Коли я в 2019 році тільки почала занурюватися в тему відкритих освітніх ресурсів і відкритих підручників, Uh, I would like to present you uh, a presentation uh, and mention that uh, in uh, 1219 uh, year, when I first uh, started to build a bridge uh, to open educational resources. То виявилося, що вся тема зовсім майже немає в текстових публікаціях розвитку в Україні. Uh, it turned out uh, that the topic wasn't presented uh, in printed materials in Ukraine. Uh, в нас дуже багато досліджень, до яких залучаються uh, бібліотекарі, uh, в першу чергу бібліотекарі університетські, які стосуються саме uh, відкритої науки. Uh, we have a lot of researches uh, that uh, include work of librarians, Ukrainian librarians, uh, about open researches. І ви всі пам'ятаєте, що бібліотеки університетів України долучилися до процесу на першому етапі створення репозитаріїв. Ну, це, до речі, ця ініціатива належала Києво-Могилянській академії вже десь 2007-2006-2007 рік, якщо я не помиляюся. Uh, and uh, you all remember that uh, Library of Ukrainian uh, Universities uh, contributed to creation of uh, repositories and uh, the uh, Library of uh, Kyiv uh, Mogolyanska University um, at the 2017 year also contributed to that topic. І потім університетські бібліотекарі почали активно підтримувати науковців, ну, у всіх напрямках. And uh, then uh, uh, university librarians started to support uh, researchers at uh, um, all the directions. Але тема підтримки інформаційної підтримки освітніми ресурсами розвитку цієї теми в бібліотеках взагалі України не було. Uh, but the topic of uh, supporting with informational resources wasn't discovered in Ukraine before. Uh, open education resources увійшли в практики um, України в нетекстовій частині, в нетекстовій, а як правило, у формі відео, от лише в 2020-2021 роках. And uh, support of uh, open education resources uh, became uh, a part uh, of uh, program only as a video, not a text uh, material form uh, in 2020-2021 uh, uh, years. І саме тому було надзвичайно цікавим, що всі європейські мої колеги які займаються відкритими освітніми ресурсами, одностайно направляли мене до підручників, створених е, такою собі бібліотекаркою, бібліотекаркою університету Айови, Сполучених Штатів Америки, Еві Елдер. And that's why it was quite interesting that uh, our uh, Europe colleagues directed me uh, right uh, to a uh, specialist librarian from Iowa, uh, United States of America. Тому давайте от ми зараз, коли я взагалі знайомила з її творчістю, 
І це декілька підручників, відкритих підручників, це статті, це воркшопи, це гранти, які вигравала ця бібліотекарка, яка стала координувати рух зі створення відкритих підручників в усіх закладах вищої освіти штату Айова, то я собі уявляла її, що це дуже поважна на пані в елегантному віці. And uh, when I got to know her work, her articles, her workshops, articles and uh, grants uh, she got, uh, then uh, when I got to know that she coordinated the movement uh, to create open uh, educational uh, resources, uh, I thought that she is uh, quite elder, quite uh, significant and already experienced person. А виявилось, що це дуже молода, талановита людина. Uh, she occurred to be quite uh, young woman. Еві uh, Елдер, Open Access and Scholar Communication Librarian, uh, Iowa State University, Сполучені Штати Америки. Uh, будь ласка, включіть. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me speak with you today. It's an honor to give this talk for you all about how librarians can, and already do, lead the way for open education. So I suppose I should start with what open education is. Just like open access or open data, open education is both a discipline and an idea. In 2008, the Cape Town Open Education Declaration laid out the goals for the open education movement and educators teaching with OER generally, stating that the open education movement is built on the belief that everyone should have the freedom to use, customize, improve, and redistribute educational resources without constraint. And that idea that we should be able to share and learn and improve one another's learning materials is also the foundation for OER. When I talk to people about this topic, I don't usually start with open education, though, because it's much more likely you've heard about open educational resources than the overarching field that they're situated within. So for those of you who are new to this conversation, open educational resources, or OER, are teaching materials that anyone in the world can access, learn from, and adapt to fit their needs. Many OER available today are in the form of textbooks, in which case we call them open textbooks. However, OER can be any kind of teaching material from videos to lesson plans and even practice exercises. The availability of OER has grown greatly over the past decade as more schools and universities around the world have begun to share their materials more widely. Having access to OER in this way isn't just good for others, though. It also helps you and your students. The use of OER in classes can help improve student learning, decrease financial strain, and build more opportunities for teachers to engage with students in their classes through adapting OER or engaging in open pedagogy. <laughs> of course, there are a lot of other things that you can do to support student success in your classrooms as well. OER won't cure every problem that we face in education, but they are a powerful tool that we can use to help the students who are most in need and to expand access to anyone who might want to learn from our materials. But like I said at the start, I won't be talking about just OER today. Instead, I want to talk about how libraries and librarians help these materials get made, shared, and ultimately used. Libraries have a long history of supporting access to information, from providing access to books and films for our communities, to developing collections and archives that ensure the long-term preservation of our knowledge and culture. And in the age of the internet, open access materials have been a natural offshoot of the library's mission. These materials are free to access for anyone in the world with an internet connection, and whether we're talking about books or articles, open access materials have been around for a long time, at least compared to OER. The rise of open access books and articles hasn't happened overnight, though. This growth has been helped along in large part thanks to libraries. Many of us have invested in preprint repositories for scholarship for public access. We have helped fund the publication of open access materials in journals or in our own publishing programs. And we've supported our users, 
teachers, students, and the public generally in finding and using these free-to-read materials. Here at Iowa State University, we've seen tremendous growth in our faculty publishing their research open access because we've invested in policies, support, and repositories to make that work easier. We know that just saying, do this, it's important, isn't good enough. Without having any support or reason to make something open, a lot of our faculty wouldn't do this at all. And our support for open education is very similar. It started out small and without much external support, but by working with our instructors, students, and partners across our university, like our instructional designers and accessibility support staff, we've been able to develop a well-regarded program that is trusted by our university and comes with robust support systems for our faculty. We've gone from having a small committee of five people from across campus talking about how can we help instructors find OER to a set of advocates and program managers who oversee a suite of services for locating, teaching with, publishing, and doing research on OER. And that support has helped more instructors adopt or create OER for their classes every year. Of course, this is not easy work. We have to invest in our instructors and our authors, show them that their work is valuable, and that making things open will help not just them, but others like them around the world. Making things open can have a great impact by expanding access to information, but that's not all that it does. Making educational resources available openly is especially wonderful, since these materials can be adapted, translated, edited, or improved by anyone who needs to make those changes. It's a cycle of continuous improvement and growth, and it just keeps going, thanks to the instructors and students who are using and improving these materials year after year. And this is all possible thanks to libraries and librarians who are providing the support and infrastructure to share OER widely. But librarians weren't always involved in OER work. The history of the open education movement began with educators leading the way. From the start, those leading the movement for OER were students and teachers, people who were intimately aware of the problems that came with the ballooning costs of course materials and the potential that we could meet by coming together to share what we have. In the Cape Town Declaration that I mentioned at the start of this talk, they list three strategies for increasing the reach of OER, the first of which is getting educators and learners to actively participate in the emerging open education movement. In 2008, librarians were not the bulk of the open education community. In fact, we weren't even mentioned. However, over the last 15 years, things have changed quite a bit. Now, when you look up speakers at OER conferences or articles about open education, a large portion of the authors and speakers will be librarians, whether they're open education librarians or librarians who support OER while having duties that they handle as their main job separate from that role. While teachers can locate materials and put them in their classes, that doesn't always lead to successful outcomes for their students. As we've learned, having partners like librarians and instructional designers is vital. Supporting instructors to not just find, but intentionally teach with OER leads to the best outcomes for our students. And librarians have the expertise in the space to manage that sort of support work by partnering with other groups across our universities, connecting instructors with those resources, and providing structure to really serve as a foundation for open education to thrive. As I mentioned at the start of this presentation, as support staff with a long history of helping people find, access, and use information, librarians just make sense to serve as partners and leaders in open education. And now, many librarians are taking a leading role in this work, supporting whole programs and departments dedicated to helping teachers who want to work with OER. After all, teachers can't do this work alone, at least not easily. So at this point, I've shared some information about open education generally, its history and why it's relevant for librarians. But you might be thinking, okay, what can we do exactly? Well, we can provide support through regular reference interactions, publishing programs, professional development, and partnerships with other groups across our universities and school systems. Let's talk about each of these potential areas of support. The first and simplest support that many of us might explore when looking into OER programming is support for users who need help locating OER. A lot of academic librarians already provide support for users to locate resources for their research and teaching needs. So providing consultations for locating OER is a natural step for these librarians as well. 
you might offer the support in a few different ways. The simplest would be to share places where users can find and access OER online, like the OERSI website. You could also provide support locating specific OER through normal reference meetings with users. You could ask them what general topic or type of material they're looking for and identify some potential options for them. Or you could do what I do and provide specific consultations for teachers to help them find OER that align with the topics they cover in their courses. How do I handle this? Well, I walk through the topics that a course covers week by week, and I try to find the best OER available that covers most or all of those topics. Maybe we'll have to combine three or more resources to make something that works, but this way I know that I won't be ignoring a potentially useful OER just because it only covers the material for one or two weeks. Moving ahead from finding OER, some libraries also offer support for users in publishing and sharing OER. Again, this could be handled in a few different ways. If you have an institutional or regional repository for open access materials, you could share OER handouts and lesson plans that teachers have created there as well. If you have a press or publishing program at your institution, you could partner with them to help develop new OER alongside authors. At my institution, I work with our digital press to help publish open textbooks, monographs, and other materials that relate to topics that are relevant for our university supporting authors by formatting and cleaning up their work for publication, so they don't have to do all of that work alone. We also offer support with peer review and share out our published materials in Pressbooks through the Pressbooks directory to ensure that they reach a wide audience. But what's important to remember here is that publishing doesn't have to be an all or nothing discussion. Sharing OER that have been created or adapted locally is still valuable even if you don't have a full publishing setup at your university. You don't need a specific piece of software, amazing graphic design work, or even full color illustrations to make a good OER. You just need someone knowledgeable and passionate about a subject who's willing to share their knowledge beyond their classroom. So now that we've talked about publishing OER, let's talk about adapting. I've mentioned it a few times during this discussion so far, but part of what makes OER special is that you can adapt, edit, and change the materials to meet the needs of your students. This means that an OER intended for an American audience can be translated and adapted to discuss issues relevant to Ukraine, or that a material created for one Ukrainian school can be adapted to work for another. Supporting adaptation is a lot like supporting publishing, with a few changes. First, you might want to start by talking to authors about Creative Commons licenses and copyright to explain how and why adaptation is possible with OER. Next, you might need to explore different options for how to adapt material. Does the author want to completely translate and transform the OER that they like already, or do they want to just make small changes? Supporting adaptation can be simpler than supporting OER publishing, or it can be even more complicated depending on your specific circumstances. Finally, there's outreach, training, and advocacy work. And depending on what type of librarian you are, you may be very familiar with this type of programming. After all, workshops, class visits, and presentations about why the library matters is pretty common for a lot of academic librarians who work with the public. However, once again, you don't have to do all of these things. A lot of open education librarians start small with a website, a library guide, or OER workshop for beginners, just to share information with their local community. That's what I did. From there, you can spend time gathering expertise and comfort talking about these topics before you jump into managing programs or talking to local leaders. Outreach can be a little stressful at first, but it's an important piece of the work that librarians do to support teachers and students who are working with OER, in addition to helping users find, use, and even create their own OER. And those examples I've just shared, that's just what I personally do to support OER at my university. There are a lot of other roles that librarians can take to support open education locally beyond what you might expect. Aside from typical work that might be done by an open education librarian, OER can also be supported by different types of librarians in different ways. Metadata, cataloging, and archiving are all necessary pieces of the puzzle for making OER findable and usable for instructors around the world. After all, a resource is only really open when it can be found and reused. If you want to support OER efforts at your university, but you feel that your work doesn't fall neatly into an open education librarian's role, think again. There may be ways that you can help that no one has thought of before. 
Think about your expertise and how it aligns with the OER programs and their unique needs as well. Of course, now that I've said all that, I should add that while librarians can be leaders for the growth of OER programs, you don't need to do this work alone either. After all, as librarians, one of our strengths is coming together to support one another through consortia, networks, and shared infrastructure. We can work with one another to do more than we can alone, and even beyond libraries, we can work with instructional designers and instructors to make sure that the content we're supporting and creating and adapting are appropriate for students as well. Here in Iowa, just a small state in the middle of the United States, an action team with members from universities across the region has managed to do great things by working together to create materials, support, and infrastructure that all of our peers can use to expand the awareness, use, and creation of OER. We share our expertise through webinars and blog posts, we work together to create marketing or outreach materials, and we listen to other colleges in our community through annual surveys and assessments to make sure that the things we are doing actually meet the needs of the librarians and instructors who are trying to support OER across our region. Iowa OER is a team that I help lead, but its members are the ones that really make it work. Without contributions from small and large schools alike, we wouldn't be able to consider the needs of the different types of universities across our region or provide the kinds of support that those schools need to start or grow their programs. And you can get involved too, through programs like the European Network of Open Education Librarians. Remember, no matter how small your contribution might seem, it can make a big impact. Because when we share, create, or adapt OER, libraries aren't just making information free for our users. We're helping people around the world learn about our culture and history, broadening our conversation beyond our borders through the internet so we can all learn from and share with one another. However, I must admit there's still room for improvement. Many of the open materials that are available today, especially OER, are only available in English. My talk today is another good or perhaps bad example. This means that even though there are more OER becoming available for free online every year, these materials are not necessarily meeting the needs of the librarians, teachers, and students in your community. Yes, they exist, but can you actually read or learn from them? And if the materials are made specifically for an audience in the United States or Canada, then the content may not be relevant or useful for your students either, except maybe for math. <laughs> Still, there is a lot of room for improvement here, and we, meaning the entire open education community, can and should do more to create and share OER that aren't made for my students, but for yours. Of course, thanks to people speaking up about this topic and thanks to programs supporting OER around the world, things are changing. More and more, we're seeing schools and universities around the world sharing their teaching materials openly as OER. Whether it's primary schools in Italy or universities in India, there's movement happening to produce OER for a non-English speaking audience. And in Ukraine, you are also doing excellent work through the open textbooks supported by the USUST library team and the many Ukrainian OER shared in OERSI. And now that I've said all of these great things about what we can do and what we're already doing, I want you to know that if you find that this work with OER is too difficult or too much for you or your team to handle right now, that's okay. Because if there's anything I can leave you with today, I want it to be this. In times of crisis, something is better than nothing. <laughs> when we are in a crisis, we tend to put on hold everything but the essentials. We can't invest in something new or different or external. We can't share, we have to preserve. This is not easy work that we can just do all at once. And that self-preservation is important. But doing something small, something that can turn into bigger and better things later, that's also important. Because when we start projects in a time of crisis, that small thing is a beacon showing that yes, we are investing in the future. We can't do everything we want to right now, but we can set a foundation that we know we'll be proud of. We can share who we are now and improve on that as we grow together. After all, that's what makes OER great. 
you can always update, improve, and adapt. And no matter what you share, you're reaching beyond your walls to help people who want to learn from you. As librarians, what could be better than that? We're sharing, we're helping, and at the end of the day, we're making information available to those who need it. Thank you for your time. I hope I've left you with some ideas about why librarians are well suited to supporting OER and why even now, small steps to make things open can still be incredibly impactful. Запитання до Ебі Елдер та її відповіді. Молоді та найпродуктивніші викладачі університету, чоловіки, воюють на фронті. Саме тому є велика кількість викладачів технічних дисциплін у поважному віці. Це чудові науковці та викладачі, але, на жаль, більшість з них не готові до створення або адаптації відкритих підручників. У такому випадку навантаження на бібліотекарі відкритої освіти різко зросте. Але й самі українські бібліотекарі майже не мають таких навичок. Лише в двох-трьох бібліотеках українських університетів. Питання. Якою має бути мотивація бібліотекарів, щоб переключитися на допомогу викладачам у створенні ОІАР та відкритих підручників в умовах кризи з великим навантаженням та мізерною зарплатнею? Thank you for the really great questions. This first one is particularly interesting, and I don't want to minimize the very real concerns that you have. However, it's here that I would fall back on the same sort of tips that I give to folks in the US who are dealing with a lack of funding, support, resources, or people to work with. Do what you can, even if it's a little bit. Open textbooks are wonderful, but they aren't the only kind of OER out there. Many teachers get started with OER by sharing content that they already created. These might be lecture videos, notes, handouts, or even syllabi. These are all really useful instructional materials that others can learn from and build upon over time. And making them open is one step that a teacher can take right now, even with limited time or creativity. And the only support you need to bring them, uh, <laughs> to bring them into this conversation is talking about why and how. Talking about Creative Commons licenses is specifically the first part of that conversation, but it doesn't take a lot to get started with this work, and you don't have to jump in all the way. Чи варто агітувати вчителів та бібліотекарів створювати відкриті підручники у форматі PDF, а не в більш сучасному та цікавому інтерактивному форматі? Yeah, this is a great question as well. Uh, there, if there's interest, if people do want to get started with OER, but you can only make PDFs, that's okay. I think that's still a worthwhile thing to do because OER can be adapted. You or anyone else who has the time can always come back and adapt the materials into another format later. I would recommend that you share any PDF content that you have also as a Word or open document format though to make adaptation easier. And if you do make PDFs, make sure that they're accessible as well. That's the important thing really is that people can actually access, read, and interface with the content you're creating. The hardest part of creating OER is not making it pretty. The hard part is finding the time to pull together that information, organize it, and make it available for other people. So anything that you can do to get that work started is important, and we can always do more later. Start add pictures, create exercises, discussion questions. Even just notes and summaries can be useful as a starting place for OER. Чи знаєте ви якісь безкоштовні видавничі платформи для представлення відкритих освітніх ресурсів у різних форматах, оскільки жоден університет в Україні не має коштів для їх розміщення, наприклад, на онлайн-платформі Pressbooks? Yeah, publishing platforms are a big deal. There are a few tools that you can use to make OER in different formats that aren't just Pressbooks, and a lot of these are free. From HTML to PDF format and more, you might look into OER Commons Open Author Tool, PubPub, LibreTexts, Manifold, Jupyter Notebooks. There are lots of open source or otherwise free online tools that you can use to make open resources. It doesn't have to be just the thing that people say they use to make OER. You don't have to use a tool that's specifically made for OER either. Even, you know, Microsoft Word can be used to make documents and export them to share online. Just find something that works for you, that's easy to teach, and that will let you export to the content formats that you need to share elsewhere. Чи можливе проведення спільного воркшопу з вами та вашою робочою групою з бібліотеки університету штату Айова для українських бібліотекарів? 
<laughs> the workshop question is a surprising one. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, depending on the time and topic, I definitely think that's something we could do. Uh, you can reach out to me in my email and we can talk through some more about the project or idea that you have in mind, but I need to learn a little bit more about it first. Thank you all for these great questions. I hope you had an excellent conference and have a great rest of your year.